hitting the streets, and Cobra in the process. Here's your look at the Hasbro G.I. Joe Classified Series Elvin Breaker Kibby with Ram Cycle. This Elvin Breaker Kinney figure comes ready for action with multiple points of articulation for high posability and character-inspired accessories, and with a custom artwork by John Tyler Christopher, the G.I. Joe Classified Series Special Missions Cobra Island Allen Breaker Kinney with Ram Cycle Package will make its mark on shelves. Before we get a closer look at Breaker and his bike, I'd like to once again thank the folks over at Hasbro that provided not only the sample of Breaker and the Ram, but also the previously looked at G.I. Joe Classified Series figures that we've been looking at here on this channel. Going to get things underway by taking the ruler, putting it as close to his head as I can get it. The figure's almost six and a half inches in height or 16 centimeters tall. Then for your comparisons, we can bring in the previously looked at Snake Eyes just to compare him next to Breaker. And why not? We can compare Timber next to the Ram. Okay, that's probably a bad comparison. But when it comes to at least the height of the figures, Breaker isn't that much different in size than Snake Eyes we looked at earlier. Now, it may not look like I've done anything different just now, but I did bring in his one accessory. The figure comes included with a helmet. And while I do think that Breaker needs to come included with his helmet, because that's one of the things he's known for as a character, I would have also liked to see the character come included with a gun. Now, before you start typing down below the things he does in fact come included with, I mean something small that he could carry around in his hand, something that could be holstered on the side of his leg. The figure doesn't come included with that. Now, con considering he's a communications officer, you could warrant the idea that maybe he doesn't necessarily need a gun. And for all the things that we've also gotten included with other G.I. Joe Classified Series figures, yeah, there's enough real other guns to go around that, yeah, you could easily just lend one off over to Breaker. But still, I would have liked to see something be holstered on the side of his leg. Anyways, though, looking at least at the helmet, taking nothing really away from it, it's a nicely molded helmet, an updated, modern look to the original helmet you would have had from the cartoon. Now, in this case, I do like what they've done to the front of the visor, taking a teal color and transitioning it to a more darker purple just above it. He has a little speaker piece on the front that's made of softer plastic. And what it looks like to the earpieces are the parts he's able to hear and communicate through on the sides of his helmet, all sculpted nicely in. Now, the helmet, of course, for obvious reasons, is going to fit over top of his head. The thing about it, though, is fitting it over top of his head. The thing I'm worried about the most is doing this repeatedly. Uh, the sculpting of the face, we're going to talk about more in a second. But if you want to get this over top of his head, just sort of put it down and then sort of navigate it forward until eventually you get the, get the right place where it looks like Breaker, at least to you. Now, for me, I think I'm probably going to only display this on the character when I've actually got him on the Ram cycle. Um, I know traditionally Breaker, at least from the cartoon, is always known for having like this helmet on. But unfortunately, you just can't see his eyes. It would have also been nice to see if they could have included a secondary helmet with maybe a clear visor too. So something that if he wasn't going around patrolling the streets for Cobra, he could have at least had also a visor that was clear. Would you still be able to see his face? That looks good. I think that looks like a classic looking Breaker, just modernized now for the G.I. Joe Classified Series run. I'm going to go ahead and take the helmet off. And again, just taking the helmet off, I just fear that it's going to start scraping the face if I'm not too careful. I'm probably not going to do that too often anyways. I'm going to put that to the side. One viewer actually did reach out and say that if you did get a chance to have a look at the breaker, one thing you may recognize, though, about the head sculpt is it looks a little bit like JCVD. For those not in the know, that's Jean-Claude Van Damme. And you know, once you started saying that, viewer, thank you for again leaving that comment, that's all I can really see now when I'm looking at Breaker. Yes, it's a bearded version of Van Damme, but I still think I'm seeing some Van Damme, especially when I'm looking at this part of his face. Consider it's a slightly more older Van Damme, yes. But yeah, I think I'm definitely seeing a little bit of Van Damme here in the head sculpt. That's certainly a fine thing to come included with G.I. Joe. I think, yeah, Hasbro, why not? If they can get a likeness rights for the characters, the actors, it would be kind of fun to do like a celebrity kind of team. You could bring in Stallone, you could bring in Van Damme, you could bring in Schwarzenegger, all done as G.I. Joes. Why not? Again, if you can get the licensing for that. But yeah, for the time being, I think it certainly fills in a spot nicely if you're looking for a Jean-Claude Van Damme figure to be part of your G.I. Joes. Paint, as always, is always nicely done here by Hasbro. I like the coloring of his face as well as the coloring of his eyes. He's like a nice brown color up for his eyes that sort of match the caterpillar eyebrows that he has above his head or just above his eyes. He's got combed back hair, which certainly does help to put his helmet in place. 
If he had longer hair, I think he'd have a little more difficult time doing it. Again, like the head sculpt is good. And now that I'm only thinking Van Damme, I really don't want to put the helmet over top of his head. But again, if you want to have it closer to looking like Breaker, I guess you will want to put the helmet over top of his face. Now, as for the rest of his outfit, it's standard military fatigues, like his outfit that he wears. I mean, it's really just a basic military green outfit that he's wearing, of course, with the pack over top of it. It's not really much to look at, certainly, when it comes to the... The coloring is nice, but there's really not a lot of real interesting aspects to his suit. The wrinkles are nicely handled here by Hasbro. But again, there's not really a lot of other things that you're looking at here on the figure. But again, basing really from the original look of Breaker, as well as the way he looked in the original toy form, this is pretty much standard practice when it comes to Breaker. Now, I do have one issue with the figure. It's his lower legs. Maybe not so much this leg, but you already see right now, this leg is really on the loose side. Uh, I don't know if I can actually go in there and try to fix that up. It sits on a ball joint. Maybe I might be able to take the leg off, for example, put either like nail polish or floor polish on there to try to thicken up the, the ball joint. Because it definitely is a little loose. I almost got a little bit of a dinner bell thing happening here with Breaker. For the figure's articulation, we'll go ahead and look at that right now. The head rotates all the way around. It hinges up. And while hinging it up, you may also see there's a hinge joint down below. So not only does he have the ball joint working at his disposal, but he also has a, ball, a hinge joint there as well. Uh, speaking also of ball joints, down below at the bottom of his neck, he also has a secondary ball joint too. Like with all the other G.I. Joe classified series figures that we've been looking at, arms do come out easily, easily at a 90 degree angle bend. You can then take the arms and rotate them all the way around as well. I don't know why I like doing this so much in reviews. Swivel at the bicep, you can do that. You can double hinge also at the elbow. Figure also has a swivel in the hands, which rotate or hinge back and forth this way. Uh, when it comes to his upper torso, now he does have the ball joint. But unfortunately, though, the figure has, like Snake Eyes, so much extra plastic that they put over top of the body that he does have it, but it's a little kind of harder to kind of move things around. In fact, I found taking the figure out of the packaging, this was the tightest thing on the figure, was this joint right here. Had to loosen it up a little bit. Yeah, sadly, it is loose on his one leg. This leg isn't so bad. Well, it's still loose, but it's certainly not as loose as this. Again, the problem with these legs is that they do drop down like this. They're supposed to do that so that when you are putting them like in the seat of a, of a, a vehicle, for example, which we really don't have a lot of vehicles to work with just yet. I kind of hope at some point we do get ourselves like a snow job with one of the Cobra, with one of the G.I. Joe uh, snow machines, little snowmobiles that they have. I think that would be a nice uh, also set to release. But yeah, I mean, if you drop the legs down, it sort of does aid to help the figure sit in a vehicle but the resulting of that is that these some of these figures get really loose in the legs. And Breaker, unfortunately, so far the worst that I've seen of the figures, at least I've, I've looked at here on this channel. Now, the legs do swivel. There's a quarter swivel cut on the thigh, about half, well, three quarters of the way up. Same on both sides. Figure does also have double hinges on the knees. And when it comes to his feet, a little again on the loose side, he does have an ankle pivot, which is the loosest of the aspects of the feet. He also has a, have a foot hinge that allows the foot to go up and down like this. So the figure is good. Uh, it's just again, I have some real, yeah, some real issues when it comes to the looseness of his legs. But a nice looking Breaker, keeping still to the core idea of what Breaker would look like. He's sort of more simple in his color scheme, kind of just more to the military greens. And again, even like the pack that's on the front of his torso is still sort of green. It's green, a lot of green, a lot of green. But still, that's the way that Breaker looks. It's up to you again to decide for yourself whether when picking this figure up, if you want to display him with or without the helmet. Don't get me wrong, I like the look of the helmet, but I also kind of like the idea that he looks a little bit like Jean-Claude Van Damme, that I might, just for the time being, leave the helmet off. On to now the G.I. Joe Ram, which again, I think is the first time that we're actually getting a vehicle in the G.I. Joe Classified series. Personally, I think it was a missed opportunity on Hasbro's part to not include with their initially released Zartan, that little water sled that he rode around in that came included with the original 80s figure. Now, I can't imagine for the size of these figures being taller already, it would be probably rather expensive for them to produce in-scale vehicles like a Cobra Hiss. Again, you would imagine how big that vehicle would have to be to accommodate a figure this size. But yeah, they could easily keep to the same scale of the Ram, and even something slightly smaller. So I'm thinking like a Scrap Iron, for example, with a Cobra Claw. Why not a Televiper with a Trouble Bubble? Why not even release a Bazooka with Silver Mirage? Silver Mirage really wasn't my favorite of the G.I. Joe motorcycles. I always thought the Ram was a lot cooler myself. Speaking, though, of the Ram, let's get a closer look at that right now. It is free rolling. We're going to move, go ahead and move Breaker over here for a second. It is free rolling because it has two giant tires, one in the back, one on the front. And it does also have a sidecar as well. As you can see, also supports a minigun. 
It does have a bottom tire, so that sort of helps to stabilize the vehicle. So if you want to just have it on display, the sidecar not only adds some additional firepower, but yeah, it keeps the motorcycle stable. Technically, yeah, you can remove the sidecar. It just detaches by two places. There's holes on either side and pegs on the other side here. And if you are worried about this then falling over, they did actually put a little kickstand, which pulls out on the bottom like that. And then, then that, providing you have it upright, there we go. You can actually have still the motorcycle standing on its own if you did want to go ahead and just leave this off. We're actually going to leave this off for the time being, because again, we're going to have a look at the gun inside. Did I say inside? Inside. This does rotate on the sidecar, but you can actually remove it too, which I think is a nice touch on their part. Simply just take the two halves and just detach them. And then you can remove this in its entirety and you can put these back together. Technically, I guess if you wanted to, you could put this back onto the bike. Some additional, uh, not stickers, but they actually did print this on. There's USA and a num little number 36 on the top tank there as well. But there's the sidecar spinning tire. I'm going to put that to the side. And then once that's freed, you can then actually take this gun. Going back to what I mentioned earlier. Yeah, I know somebody was going to say down below, well, he does come included with the gun. Yeah, he comes included with this as well. Um, this can fit into his hands. You can take the one side clamp it around his hands and just make sure his thumb's out of the way. Sometimes his thumb does get in the way of things. And then you can do the other hand and just hold on to the top handle. Again, that just clips in place. Bear with me, bear with me, bear with me. There we go. And you can have him actually holding some quite substantial firepower in the palm of his, of his hands. This could be quite considerably heavy. And as you can see, there's no ammo or anything like that attaches to anything else. So it's probably all self-contained, but at least he does actually come included with some firepower. Still though, I would have liked to include like a little small pistol. Again, just something he could carry around on him because I can't expect him to carry around this all the time. It'd be quite considerably heavy. Anyways, let's go ahead and just take this out of his hands and put the figure back down, loose legs and all. Let's just get his legs straight now here. Ah, those legs just way too loose. If you want to get the figure on the motorcycle, by the way, just before we quickly do that, I want to show you, not again, some stickers, but they actually did paint on GI Joe logo on the one side, down below a star with MG1027. And then on the other side, the same number with different decals or different uh, paint applies on the top there. 36, again, matching the tank. And there's also the US flag down below here. Originally back in the 80s, if I was to pick this vehicle vehicle up in Canada, they would have actually replaced the American flag with a Canadian flag. Did you know that? Did that here in Canada. Um, but if you did want to put him actually on the motorcycle, you could do one of two things. He does have pegs on either side, little struts that stick out from the motorcycle that you can actually attach the figure's legs to if you actually want him just more upright like this. For me, at least, I'm going to actually just put the bike down here for a second. I'm going to separate once again the car. And if you wanted to see how it goes back into place, all you do is line everything up here. I want to make sure it's facing the right way. See this little open slot right here? The slot accommodates that handle. So providing you line the handle up, you should be okay. Take that side and then take the other side and just sandwich everything together. That would be a deliciously dangerous sandwich. But anyways, once that's all together like this, just take again those pegs and line them up to the holes on the other side. I'm just putting everything back the way I found it put everything back there, and then we're just going to remove back, push back the, the kickstand. I'm going to take the, the figure, breaker, I guess what we should really do, if you're riding around on a motorcycle or a regular cycle, uh, you always make sure you wear a helmet. Just a friendly 411. Now you know, and knowing is half the battle. We're going to go ahead and put the helmet back on the breaker. Yeah, it does look, it looks a lot more like breaker like this. We're going to bring the arms around, we're going to bend the legs, bend the legs, and bend the knees. And then once the knees are bent, I'm sure by now everybody knows how to put a character on top of a motorcycle, but we're kind of doing this quick tutorial. Going to just put the figure on top like this. Now, again, he does have the pegs on both sides, but for me, I'd rather have the legs further back like this, just providing you don't get the, keep the feet away from the tire, whatever you do. And then you can then take the handles and feed them through, navigate them into his hands. There's the one side. I will do the exact same thing on the other side. There's technically as well some posability on the bike. The front of the bike actually does rotate back and forth. And when it does rotate, you can actually see as well, it rotates the handlebars. So that's a nice touch as well. And there you have Breaker actually on his bike. I'm just going to move him just a little bit forward here. And one of the benefits actually as well, going back to the fact he did have the hinge joint in his neck, you can actually take his neck and, and bring it up. 
Because it would make no sense at all if he's riding around on his motorcycle for not to be able to see where he's going. And at least, because they did accommodate some additional hinging in his neck, Breaker can actually see where he's going instead of just looking down when he's trying to ride around blindly on his bike. Really nice job on Hasbro's part, not only giving us uh, ourselves an Alvin Breaker Kibby, let's just call him Breaker, and also the Ram Cycle. Could there be a potential down the road for them to release more figures and vehicle two-packs? I think yes. I mean, the likelihood of them probably again doing like a hiss or something of that size is probably slim to none. But yeah, sticking with the formula of getting a smaller vehicle, I think there's lots of G.I. Joe vehicles available out there that they could easily pair up with a G.I. Joe character or a Cobra character and release as a two-pack like they've done right here. Really, other than Breaker having really loose legs, so quickly getting him out of the packaging, it's already now starting to affect his ankles too. I really am happy with this release of Breaker along with the Ram Cycle. Ram, I think, pairs well with Breaker. I mean, really, if you think about it, would Breaker have done well if he was just sold on his own? Would the drabber colors of the olive green work well for a singular release? And as I say that, I'm thinking of like the likes of Leatherneck and also Gun Ho. I mean, some of the G.I. Joe figures that have been released more, I'm thinking the Joes than the Cobras, have had sort of underwhelming colors to match the color scheme of what the original figures look like. Maybe Breaker could have done well on his own, but if you really are going to be picking a figure to go along with a vehicle, I think picking one of the original lineup to go with one of the original vehicles makes the most logical sense. Now, again, speaking of the vehicles, this, again, might be the first time that we are getting, in fact, ourselves a vehicle. I can't imagine that Hasbro is already thinking about doing, like, unless they do, like, Hasbro Pulse for some of the larger scale vehicles, like a Cobra Hiss, for example. Because I got to imagine, if they were to do a Cobra Hiss, and I keep saying Cobra Hiss because I'm really kind of wanting a Cobra Hiss as part of the classified series, but to do a vehicle that size and then to include a driver, because they're, they're not going to sell that driver on his own, you're probably looking at the, the vehicle, I'm guessing, what, $70, $80? Would people pay $70, $80 to get a larger scale Hiss and Cobra Hiss driver? Maybe not. But maybe to do as a Hasbro Pulse, maybe that's something that they could pull off. But if they are still thinking and considering and doing retail release vehicles, think small. I mean, there's enough small vehicles, both on the Cobra and G.I. Joe side, that there's lots to pull from. I mentioned some, some already in this review, like there's the Cobra Claw, there's the Cobra Trouble Bubble. And even I was thinking like the Cobra Fang. I mean, those are some great smaller scale vehicles that you could easily pair along with Cobra Troopers, and in the case of Cobra, and do the exact same thing with G.I. Joe. I mean, just keep something small, and I think people are going to be picking it up. I was excited to see Breaker get released with the Ram Cycle, now finally getting in hand. Really, really happy, other than the legs of, of Breaker, really happy with how the set turned out. Big thank you once again to the folks over at Hasbro that did, in fact, provide the Breaker along with the Ram Cycle that we have a look at in this review. For your video question for today, asking you, the viewing audience, what's your favorite G.I. Joe vehicle? And I say G.I. Joe, more relating to the cartoon. It doesn't have to be G.I. Joe, it could be Cobra too. But what's your favorite G.I. Joe vehicle? I have a personal soft spot towards the G.I. Joe Havoc. I don't know why. It wasn't one of the earlier vehicles. It kind of came around the Arise Serpento Arise time. But I always was a big fan of the Cobra, of the G.I. Joe Havoc. Kind of made more of a predominant role, I think, in the G.I. Joe movie. But what is your favorite G.I. Joe slash Cobra vehicle? Let me know down below in the comments section. And if you are new to this channel, you're enjoying the content you're seeing, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Turn on the bell notification so, yes, you are getting those friendly reminders of whenever new videos are going to be popping up. We are going to be looking at some more G.I. Joe Classified Series stuff, so make sure you keep your peepers peeled to this channel. As always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.